So let's talk about derivatives, which are basically half of calculus. If you're not familiar with calculus, or you would like some introductory lessons, go look up my first video, Calculus Introduction, or whatever I called it. But basically, the derivative of a function is the slope, in other words, the rate that the value of the function is changing. We have a function. The function is valid from a to b, so let's say this is x and this is f of x, and we're interested in the slope of the function at a particular spot. So we'll call that spot p, and then we'll go just a little bit over, just a tiny bit, and we'll call this q. So a less than or equal to p less than or equal to q less than or equal to b. And of course, a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. x is a value within the valid a to b range, and p and q are in that range as well. a always comes before b, p always comes before q. So what is the slope? What is the slope? It's if you recall, you might say df of dx, or if it's a little more clear, delta f over delta x. If you think about speed, you might measure position in meters, where is the car, and time, how much time has passed, is measured in seconds. So x might be in seconds and f of x might be in meters. So this is the motion of the car. It went forward and backward and forward. And you want to find out at this particular moment how fast was the car going. Positive would be forward, negative would be backward, and zero would be stopped if you're looking at speed. In this case, it's slightly sloping down, so it's moving backwards. So you have meters and you have seconds. Speed would be meters per second. Meters per second, that's division. Think about a derivative like division. This is why we have the change in f and the change in x. The change in the position and the change in time is how much position changed per time. If you went three meters in half a second, then you went six meters in one second, so six meters per second. So it's just f of q minus f of p. That is how much the function changed. In this case, f of q might be 4, f of p might be 5, so you get negative 1, if that's what the values were, and then change in x, which is how much time. So that's just q minus p. How much the function changed from q to p, and how much q to p changed. And you get f of x is in meters, x is in seconds, so meters per second. That's the derivative. You've now calculated the derivative at that spot. Now later on, I'll show you, once I get into limits and actually proving calculus, I'll show you how to do the full version where you get a nice function that's valid anywhere and you just plug in a value and you get the derivative at any spot and you can plot the derivative. Right now I'm trying to teach you how the derivative works and that's just what it is. Now you'll say this is not the slope at that spot because it's not infinitely thin. It's a slope over a small region. That's right. But you can pick p and q to be as close together as you want. If p is the spot you're interested in, then you have q. And you just need to know how accurate you need to be. Accurate to within a meter, a centimeter, a millimeter, a micron, a picometer, whatever. Just keep reducing q, reducing q for, for however much precision your calculator has, because eventually you'll run out of calculator precision too. You can make q as close as you want, and you'll get as accurate a value as you want. And that's how you calculate the derivative at a spot. But let's write this slightly differently, because I said p is the spot you're interested in. Instead of f of q minus f of p, let's introduce a number h. h is just greater than zero. It's just any number greater than zero, so it's always positive. What if we say, instead of f of q minus f of p, we say f of p plus h minus f of p. So the p spot is the spot we're interested in, and then we go a little bit over. How much? Well, just choose h to be your precision. Keep reducing h to get more precision. If you don't care about that much precision, increase h. It'll make your calculation easier. So then q is p plus h minus, and then of course p. But we can simplify this. We've got a p and a minus p, so we're just left with h under here. So we have the number h is just there. This is the simple version of a derivative that you'll see used to prove derivatives, to derive them with limits, which we'll get into reasonably soon. But for right now, just pretend h is always greater than zero. It's never zero, because then you'd be dividing by zero. You can't do that. But it's greater than zero. It's as small as you want. But there's a better mathematical form, nice and simple. So let's leave this for later, when we do limits, because this version right here is a little more clear to look at. Delta f over delta x, this is the intuitive 
derivative version. The derivative predicts the new value. If you know that you have gone six meters and you are going one meter per second at that moment that you measured you had gone six meters, then if you go one second and don't change your speed, you will go seven meters or you will have gone a total of seven meters after one more second. Speed may be changing still, but if we just assume it's not, then the derivative predicts the new value of the function if you have the starting value. The starting value of the function is f of p, and then we add the derivative, f prime of p. This is another of the notations for the derivative. f prime of p is just this. It's a single number and it represents the slope at that spot. And this is what we're using to approximate it. This gets us as close as we need, just keep reducing the q minus p as much as you need, get a number, and then there it is. So this is going to be, if this is meters, this is meters per second. And then how much time? Well, there's your q minus p. And this is going to be f of q approximate, say approximate, after you've gone from p to q with the derivative at p and the starting value at p, you get approximately f of q. Smaller q minus p, more accurate. In other words, it's the integral. So if I change that back to equals, let's do some math. Let's take this f of p and move it over here, minus f of p. Now we have q minus p here, let's divide it over, and we're left with just the derivative at p is q and p, q and p. Just a fun little illustration. So that's derivatives. This is how you'll find it done in some engineering and statistics situations where you're not really trying to do formal math. You're not trying to analyze trends. You just want to find values and use them to do work. So you have measurements over time and you want to look at specific values and you can tell it get values here, here, and here, and here. And you look at them, do math on those, and get some engineering done. You don't always have to use the most formal and advanced form of math to do math. Just depends on your end goal. But of course, we do want to know the formal version, which I'll get to in a future video, after I have shown you limits. But first, I want to show you integrals, just like this, so you have the other half of the puzzle. Until then, I'll be seeing you.